Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Today we have come down to the beach to have a barbecue, basically. For clarity, this is not a fire, this is a barbecue. It's a solid fuel barbecue. Check the local area regulations. I'm all good to have it today. Not a fire ban day, and barbecues with solid fuel are all good. So it's a different thing. There's charcoal in this barbecue, not wood. Uh, but wood is actually technically a source of solid fuel. So anyway, check your local area regulations to make sure that you can do this legally. PSA, well, safety message over. You'll get to see the final results soon, which is this. But just remember, there's a code word somewhere in this video to win a copy of my cookbook or the equivalent value on my online store. Today we're going to do beef bulgogi. So I've come down and set up on the beach. Uh, stunning day, a uh, bit windy. That's why I've come a little bit off the beach, but that's WA. WA is a windy place. Also a bunch of cops down here and SES trying to find a bogged vehicle, which I put the drone up for and I couldn't find a damn thing. So. I don't know what they're looking for, but there ain't no bogged vehicle down here. Also, I don't know why the cops are looking for a bogged vehicle with the SCS. That's, do you get bogged unless you are, you know, under serious duress. I don't think you should be wasting police time. Anyway, tinder shreds in there. Give them a quick light. Freshly gas lighters, actually, funnily enough, light worse than once they've sort of regulated a little bit. Takes a few clicks. So, to light charcoal, all you do, just chuck your fire lighters in, chuck some um, charcoal around it, and give it some time. So while I wait for that, I'll um, prep the other ingredients, which is not very much. So, I'm gonna make some rice. To do that, all you do is you add a one and a half to one ratio of, ro of rice to water. And fun fact, rice, if you make one cup of rice, it equals three cups of cooked rice. So I only want about a cup and a bit. So I'm gonna do oh, roughly a quarter of a cup in here. Not of this cup, this is just me sort of roughly measuring stuff. Get that and I'm going to rinse it. To rinse it I probably put about three times too much water in there, so probably a cup and a half. Oh sorry, uh, two cups of water in there or something. And you want to just, if you're short on water don't do this too much. Like if you're short on water don't do it at all. But it just does make the rice a little bit um, less starchy so it doesn't stick together as much. It's a bit more... Uh, individual pieces which tends to be a touch nicer and when you pour that out you'll see it comes out really cloudy now why am I doing this so early because rice cooks better if it's been soaking for a little bit so now I'll add my correct amount of water and just leave that to the side until the fire is good to go Probably put something in that cup. I don't know what I'll have yet, but I'll have something. Now, to prepare my beef bulgogi, at home, I zapped up a bunch of ingredients in the food processor. So I think I chucked in an apple, a red apple. You can also use like a nashi pear or something. It's what's traditionally used in Korean recipes, but I wanted to use something that's accessible at every supermarket. Uh, one shallot, four cloves of garlic, brown sugar, some sesame oil, some soy sauce, black pepper, and one, well, the end of, two spring onions. That's from memory, so if I've missed anything, I'll put it on the screen and let you know what I've missed. But I'm pretty sure I nailed that. Uh, zapped it all up. Then I took that, that mixture, I took it to my butcher. So I went to Bully Butcher and I had them slice up a beautiful scotch fillet and put it in with the mixture into a cryback bag to get to know each other for a few hours before we cook it. Now I've actually made too much mixture for how much steak is in there, but that is totally fine. It's just gonna mean it's beautifully coated. Leave that in the fridge. I'm actually gonna chuck it in the freezer for a few minutes to make sure that it's really cold and doesn't overcook. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's basically beef and garnish. So, oh, there'll be some carrot and stuff, but anyway, well, I'll get out the other ingredients when this is a little bit closer. Okay, that's getting a bit of heat into it now. Not tons, but that's okay. Uh, I don't need tons at the moment, because all I'm trying to do is boil some rice. Get that slowly heating up. Next, I'm gonna put in, get some carrot done. It's a bit low on vegetables, so if you like, um, if you like veggies, the Koreans traditionally do this with like a bunch of sides. So you'll have some green beans and um, some cucumber and of course, kimchi. Kimchi is Korean pickled vegetables and they are freaking delicious. This is a bit of a sad carrot, but that's okay because we're gonna cook it. And if you're wondering, no, I haven't sold my Prado and got a Delica. 
Uh, and yes, this is on the west coast. So the Prado is still there. It's still in my driveway. It's great. I just took it to the four-wheel drive show. And um, I've still got my camper trailer and all that kind of stuff. But I thought I'd celebrate this thing, you know, coming back to WA and actually take it out for a little day trip. It's perfect. It was already sort of set up from all the east coast stuff. So I thought, why not? All right, that's about the right size. We'll get the spring onion out, but there's no rush with that. Now to cook this, I'm gonna use this guy, which is a Solid Technics something or other pan. I don't even know what it's called. It's a 26 centimeter pan with holes in the bottom. I'll put the name on the screen. The reason for that is that the grill on this has slightly too far apart bits. So this is perfect for like a Weber, for any kind of a small mesh charcoal grill. If you know my Red Roads fire pit, that's got very narrow grills, uh, perfect for that. That kind of thing. There are tons and tons of different grill options, just not that one. Uh, you can also just do this in a, in a fry pan. Um, if you're doing a fry pan, it's gonna look different. So mine will be more caramelized, but I lose the juice. Whereas if you do it in a fry pan, it will be less caramelized, but it'll retain all that moisture. So there are arguments for both, um, but traditionally, if you go to one of those cook it yourself Korean places, they are gonna give you a charcoal grill and so that's how they recommend doing it. So that's how I'm gonna do it. All right, that rice is nearly done. So I think I can do some of the other bits. Now, I wasn't gonna do this, but I just kind of feel like it. So I'm gonna get these harder bits of the spring onion, what's left of the rest of the recipe. Cut all the soft green bits off, get these bits. And I like to just sort of do spears, kind of about, oh, probably two, three centimeters long, about an inch long. I'll never forget, I got a comment once and a guy being angry that I would flick between, or that I would say both American and metric measurements, or imperial and metric measurements, because he thought I was pandering to Americans too much. Now that's boredom. That is true boredom at home where you get on the internet and you have a go at someone over that. All right, that's... Oh, it's so close, that'll be done in like, I don't know, a few seconds. Now, if I do that at the end to sort of make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan, but also just to fluff it up a bit. So, I think there's probably enough residual heat in there. Put it on my knackered old table. Yep, cooked through fine. A few seconds, all good. Get my beef out. Ooh! While well, I'm in here, it's back to sour season. It's warm. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt, bare feet. Not that the bare feet thing is um, season exclusive. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Right, I can hear that burning in there. You can hear it crisping on the bottom. So I'll take the lid off, let that air out and dry and yeah, that's all good. Now this is on the lowest setting on, this is a, a Osbry Mini Bry. It's a new one. It's like the compact bry that I've used heaps of times, but minier. What I found actually is the Mini Bry gives off much more heat for the like equivalent amount of wood because it's just a bit smaller. It really pumps it out. It's kind of like a got a bit more of a chimney effect. It's also just a good size for one or two people. Like actually significantly smaller bag. I did really notice the difference in the bag size. All right, oil first. No, don't get ahead of yourself, Harry. So to oil this, you can't obviously just pour oil into that because it won't work. So I'm just gonna use a bit of paper towel. Should have known that was gonna happen. Start with carrots. Now, if you want to know the recipe for any of my recipes written, it's in the video description in every, one, every single video. So you don't need to take notes. Now, get these thin strips of beef. Listen to that sear. This is just one thick scotch fillet. So it's probably enough for two people. No, it's definitely enough for two people. And I'm going to take some of the meaty part home. Threads off chasing birds. Reminds me of me when I was a much younger man. God, I feel old saying that. 
Ugh, I just heard that come out of my mouth and I'm kind of disgusted at myself. Ah, oh, when I was a young boy, I'd be chasing all the girls. Ugh. All right, and we'll chuck these spears of spring onion in there. Look at that. Great heat. Oh, the smell. This smells exactly like a Korean barbecue place, which is obvious because this is what they make, Korean barbecue places, but it's still fun. Now the apple in this marinade is not entirely crucial, but, but a very huge part of it. And that is because it's a meat tenderizer. So it means that if you have a slightly worse cut of meat, you can just leave it in there for like 48, 72 hours and it will tenderize it even more. You can even use like thinly cut brisket or chuck, save yourself a bit of money and just tenderize it for a few days. But just to be clear, those will not yield the same result. This is still gonna be better. Also, if you're doing a short cook like this with charcoal, you can chuck your coals back in a bucket of water, um, leave them for five, 10 minutes, and then take them out, put them in a, like a any kind of a um, not sealed bag, like a canvas bag, that you know, not, not canvas bag, like a fabric bag. Uh, let them dry out and you can use them for the next cook. This smell is unreal. Not stirring this too much because I do want it to brown in certain spots. You know, I could probably take this a step further and go straight in the charcoal. That's pretty cool. What's going on, Fred? You being a good boy? Hey! Hey! All right, that, I think, you don't need this to be all blackened and seared everywhere. Otherwise the meat will actually go a bit tough. That looks perfect to me. So we'll serve up some rice. That is not enough rice. Oh well. Find something somewhat, oh, something somewhat heat proof here. Oh, here we go. Holding glove, that'll do. So I don't burn, oh, no, that's gonna get all dirty now. Oh well. Do it in the air. Get some of the good stuff on top. Green stuff. Sesame seeds. And that is definitely ready for gratu gratuitous B-roll. It has been a long time since I've done gratuitous B-roll. I'm kind of looking forward to it. All right, let's give this a crack. Oh, I wish I wish I had chopsticks right now. It feels very wrong using this with a fork, even though this channel's called, you know. Mm. <laughs> okay. Straight off the bat. Do this with good beef. I know I said you can use other stuff. That beef is just crucial. Mm. It's savory and sweet at the same time. So kind of like as sweet as teriyaki beef or like a honey soy chicken, that kind of thing, you know, it's got salty and sweet. Um, certainly not a sweet dish, but it has sugar in it. I want to try something. I just want to try this. Just a touch, because I use gluten-free soy in this and it's not quite, as salty as normal soy, and I think it needs a touch more soy. So the, res the recipe will absolutely reflect that. But let's see how that goes. There it is. There it is. Ah, 
unreal. The um, the sesame oil really comes through. Mmm. I'm actually almost got feverish there. I'm trying to eat it so fast. <laughs> okay, does it go well with beer? Okay, firstly, it's a hot day, so everything goes well with beer, and that is fantastic. And someone is Lemmy bashing down on the beach, and I don't care. Mm, that is delicious. All right, I'm going to stand here and smash this. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. And don't forget to comment the code word down below. Man, this is good. All right. Now I'm going to try and take a thumbnail. That's going to be awkward. You'll get to see this later. But remember, somewhere in this video, there is a... Th uh. Now, you'll get to see the final results soon. But remember, somewhere in this video... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm going to taste it.